Okay, so welcome to this month's KeyShot webinar. Today's presenter is our newest addition to the Luxion team and longtime KeyShot power user, Dries Verwurp. Thank you for joining us, Dries. Uh, Dries will be giving a behind the scenes look at the process of how KeyShot was used to create interactive visuals for the brand new specialized Venge product launch. A full recording of this webinar will be available to view at keyshot.com as well as youtube.com slash keyshot3d. Uh, as the webinar is going along, please feel free to post any questions to the GoToWebinar panel and we'll do our best to address them. Um, so without further ado, Dries, take it away. Okay, Rex, thanks for the intro. So, yeah, as Rex said, I've just started as a digital media artist at Luxion. And a few months before um, I started this new adventure, I had the pleasure and the privilege of uh, being involved in a visualization project that was carried out, carried out for Specialized. Uh, as it will, yeah, in regards to a, uh, the, a new bike product launch. Um, the agency that I collaborated with was TB&O, Thomas Burke and others. They are a creative imaging studio. Um, so they do photography as well as uh, digital uh, rendering and animation. Um, for all kinds of uh, clients, uh, they are based in California. Uh, let me first give a little intro about the agency itself. So they are uh, involved, as you can see in their gallery, in quite a few different uh, markets, ranging from bicycle components to yeah, wine bottles, uh, hard disks, uh, yeah, pretty much anything you can think of. Uh, all pretty much uh, high-end imagery. So, the project that we collaborated on was a new bicycle launch of Specialized, uh, more specifically the 2016 uh, version of the, the Specialized S-Works -work, Venge, as you see it right here. So it is a pretty important bike for Specialized, as it is hailed uh, the, the world's fastest uh, road bike, actually. Um, and for this new product launch, the product that we delivered uh, as a team of uh, creatives was an interactive presentation to go on a mini site for Specialized. And what you see here is the actual product that we delivered uh, for Specialized. So. It is a interactive um, product presentation that was created entirely inside uh, Keyshot using Keyshot VR. And as you scroll through the VR, you get to see all the details of the of the bike, all the features uh, that make it kind of stand out uh, in the bicycle market. Uh, like the special integrated brakes, um, the yeah kind of uh, exotic uh, carbon fiber material, as well as all additional uh, yeah accessories like water bottles, um, uh, GPS unit from Garmin. 
the inter and also highlighting the intricate details that uh, yeah that just make up the the build of this bike. So this is what we created, and in this webinar I'll be yeah just giving a brief overview of the entire project. Uh, how involved it, it really was and yeah, w what we did uh, as a team of three people to make it happen. So I, as I said before, uh, I collaborated with, uh, or at least I did the work for uh, Thomas Burke and others. Um, the guy I worked with is uh, Mike James, he's the principal uh, Art director of uh, of the studio, and the other guy that was uh, on the team is uh, Tim Fair. He is also a long time uh, Keyshot user, and you know I would say a Keyshot legacy by now. So if any one of you guys uh, ever visits the, the Keyshot forums, you've probably seen um, his work uh, somewhere before. He is actually a uh, full a full time C CGI leader and uh, render expert and Keyshot user at uh, at Chrysler. So let's start uh, at the beginning of this project. So uh, it really all started with a very um, coarse um, yeah, prototype model of the bike and actually uh, like this thing was uh, drawn up on the, the beginning of April uh, well two months before the, the actual release of the bike and the Keyshot VR but as you can see even then uh, not having any CAD data at that moment, uh, Mike James of uh, TB&O uh, met with uh, the the guys at Specialized, and they actually drew up a very yeah a very coarse scenario for uh, what the what the VR should be showing. And actually, if you look at it now. Um, the way the storyboard is actually sequenced, it pretty much resembles what the what the final VR uh, looks like. So, as with uh, any any good uh, rendering job, it really all starts with with the the CAD data that goes in, uh, yeah into Keyshot. Uh, let me see. Yeah. So, um, with a project this involved, uh, there is really lots of CAD data coming in from uh, from all kinds of uh, yeah places, suppliers. So. So obviously you have uh, the frame which is developed and well, produced by Specialized itself. But as with any bike, and uh, even more so with this kind of high-end bike, there are lots of different components that are supplied by OEM suppliers or, yeah, like for instance, these brakes, they are from SRAM. These derailers are from SRAM. You have the chain. These are typically data sets that are not modeled by the bicycle supplier because it's like an off-the-shelf component. It's not critical to the yeah the the production of the bike to have these CAD data available. But if you need to deliver a a full product presentation, a digital product presentation, you obviously need all these detailed components. 
So when we first started off with this project in April, uh, this is basically the only get data that we got at that moment, at that point in time. So it's actually just the the different sections uh, of the of the frame itself. Uh, there weren't at that moment wheels. Uh, we just we had no steering wheel. Uh, we had no steer. We had no saddle. It was this that we had to work with for well something like a week. But still, you need to pro you need to do the progress and you need to yeah to to to, to make storyboards. Uh, about what the key shot, what the VR uh, should do. So even if you don't have like the final get data, even if you can do like a, a VR with the, the get data that will be used in the final product, you still can work out scenarios by yeah by just starting with a with a sample bike. By the way, I will be doing these, uh, these, this webinar in uh, Keyshot 6, which is still in beta. Um, whenever there is a significant difference with the current Keyshot 5, I will surely call them out. So. Just lower this resolution a tiny bit. So this is a early scene that we built of the bike. So it's still it's a bit further in development. So we actually got the wheels back then, but we still have no chain or no derailleur. So it's still a pretty coarse model. We have no decals, but still in such an early stage, you can you can actually import the model in 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 Keyshot and start to work on animations. Just to get like a feel of what what you're what you're trying to achieve and, and how you should go about it. So really you don't really need the final data to start working on your VR and your animation. It can be a very yeah a very progressive progress and a very yeah you you can you can actually update your model as as you go along. So as we progressed with the project, we got more and more components as the yeah w basically with every every day. And this is what the the final get data looked like when we got it from from specialized. So this is actually the stuff they usually uh, include in their own uh, get data so you have obviously the frame you have the yeah the wheels um, you have all the major components but as I zoom in for instance on the wheel you there is actually no tire because that's another component they just pick off the shelf you have no yeah spoke nipples to hold the spokes uh, into the into the rim itself. You have no yeah no valve stem. There are no derailers because those parts are typically sourced from uh, a supplier like Shimano or SRAM as well. 
So you still have a, a pretty coarse model that needs some some remodeling, adjusting, some additional components to make it to make it truly believable in a full product presentation. As well as well, um, all these parts are obviously delivered as uh, as solid solid bodies. Um, which means if you just import them into Keyshot, they will have a, a single material. But if you actually have a look at the the actual finish, you can see, for instance, that there is uh, that there are different surfaces even on this uh, this water bottle cap. You have a rough finish uh, overall, but you have seven, yeah. The finger grip areas they are in uh, more shi more shiny, so you need to provide uh, those uh, those treatments and get as well so that you can can actually assign different surfaces uh, different finishes in Keyshot. So as I said before. Uh, we were a three-part, uh, a three, uh, yeah, three-people team, and the reason why this project was, or, or at least one of the reasons why this project was so successful, is that we had a very, a very balanced team. We had, we each were assigned uh, th very different tasks based on our different expertise. Uh, I myself am an industrial designer uh, who, yeah, has mainly experience uh, modeling mechanical stuff in in SolidWorks. Um, while Tim Fair, as uh, yeah, a CGI a CGI specialist at Chrysler, is is very good at working in in Maya and just lighting uh, lighting lighting in general. And then we have uh, Mike, J Mike James, who was the, the team leader and who actually was the, the, the central guy in between us creatives and specialized. And he did a lot of, uh, yeah, he was essential in getting the right information, the right data, the right images, references from specialized and keeping track and keeping track of the project and keeping the, the project in budget. So it's, it was really critical to have these different uh, expertise and different uh, yeah, abilities inside the team with very, very little overlap in, 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 yeah, in tasks. So as I have access to my own files, I will uh, yeah, explain a bit uh, the work I did on the CAD data uh, that, that was involved in, in getting it uh, optimally into, into Keyshot for, for rendering. So, yeah. So this is what I talked about in, uh, about the water bottles. In order to get, uh, yeah, them into Keyshot, so you can apply different finishes, you have to separate out the surfaces. But it is all imported data, so you just have like a a single feature. So this is actually something you have to do manually. Uh, you can assign a color to each face, and then if you import it into into Keyshot, you have different different faces to work with. So because of the different colors, I now have separate surfaces that I can assign different materials. Just going to pick some random materials for now. So, 
this was uh, a large uh, part of the work that had to be done because there are lots of uh, lots of uh, surfaces and and yeah just components in the product that require a a different finish uh, for instance this this cage to, that holds the bottle uh, it, ha it it it's actually a carbon fiber uh, piece as well but it has a shiny outer surface and then it has like a a yeah a woven carbon uh, sort of rough interior surface so this had to be provided as well um, can quickly show this so yeah so the way it comes from the client is as a single solid uh, yeah single material single finish uh, yeah geometry and then you have to spend the time to actually yeah split out surfaces make them give them a different color so you can give them a different material in keyshot uh, Actually, especially for this part, it was quite a involved uh, process that required a significant number of features and thinking to make it actually work. But I think in the end, it, it pays off to spend the time, especially if you're doing uh, close-up shots. And it actually really shows uh, yeah, the kind of effort that went into it to make it really believable. Another big part of the job I did on this bike was um, on the derailers. So this is again, yeah, the same story. Uh, you would get these derailers in a very rough format from from the supplier. Uh, actually, this derailer was a a single part with yeah non-movable parts and. I had to prepare the data so that it is actually, yeah, as you can see in the different colors, they are separate parts that are actually articulated so that the derailleur can be positioned relative to the to the, the cassette, uh, the chain, and and the chain rings in the front. It's the same deal for the front derailleur. They had to be the imported data had to be changed significantly to make it, yeah, to make it uh, articulated uh, so that it can actually, actually move um, to make it, yeah, to make it fit the bike uh, in the whole uh, assembly. So, but yeah, that's for the mechanical part. Um, but then, uh, obviously, there are several uh, there are several area, several components that are not so mechanical in nature. For instance, these uh, just looking for the right view here. The the bar the bar tape on the yeah on the steer on these bar handles. They had to be modeled as well because they are, I guess, universally uh, for any bicycles, any bicycle uh, manufacturer, they are never modeled. These are, this is actually a tape. They wrap around the handles. But there was no CAD data of this at all. So Tim Fair is a Maya expert. He, 
uh, he, he took these uh, these uh, he took on modeling these this bar tape as well as a let me see as well as modeling the the tires and the texturing and splitting splitting of the surfaces of uh, of the wheel rims. Um, as you may or may not see the the wheel, the tires themselves the tires they have a a yeah a texture that runs uh, all all around all around the side. These were actually uh, modeled inside Maya as well and then patterned across. Just to, just to show that yeah, there's a lot of detail that went into preparing this bike for um, uh, yeah for before rendering. So you may wonder why I spent all the time modeling all this stuff. Uh, you may not even see these details uh, from from afar, but you really need the details if you like. Yeah, want to do close-ups of basic of of product features, and it, well, having all these details like these spoke nipples and the valve stem with actually the threads modeled into them and having like the textures as they are in real life and having the actual bumps on the tires and having all the split surfaces and the accurate presentation representation of the carbon material it really helps to, to to sell yeah to sell the product and it yeah i mean it really it really pays off to give a realistic uh, representation of a, of a product. So here we are in Keyshot. The way this uh, VR is was set up is as a it is actually a a sequence of animations and as I stack these windows As I play back the animations on a timeline, this is actually what you're seeing inside uh, the VR. Seems to be a little bit of a lag here. So everything you've seen in the in in the VR was actually animated. Everything was animated inside one scene, and I can tell you there are a lot of animations. Uh, this is a a look, a screenshot of the animations that went into the scene. And as you can see, there are quite a lot of them. And this is actually a job that was entirely carried out by Mike James from TBNO. So we spent lots of time pulling in, in Keyshot all the pieces that I modeled, that Tim modeled, uh, bringing it all together in one scene, making sure everything is aligned correctly 
which means that yeah, if you import a tire, it should be exactly on this rim and not yeah offset at some random distance. Which brings me to uh, another important aspect of uh, yeah collaboration, especially when you have uh, many different uh, yeah different pieces coming in from different different softwares, different CAD packages. Um, it's quite important to have yeah a, a consensus about the origin of the product you're you're actually visualizing. So in this case, uh, yeah, I'm using SolidWorks here. If I click on my origin, you can see this tiny blue dot. That's the origin, the origin of of the bike, and it's actually sitting right in the middle uh, on the the crank, the crank uh, uh, axle. And in fact, it's the origin of every single uh, part and assembly in the in the bike. So, for instance, when I was working on, on the materials and the textures of these water bottles, uh, let me just quickly grab them. It should be here. Yeah. So, so for all the different subcomponents, I made, yeah, put them into different folders. And I actually worked on the water bottles in separate Keyshot scenes uh, because it's it just a bit easier to focus on textures, materials, uh, labels uh, when you're yeah just when you're just these components in in a scene without having like the huge uh, yeah, the huge part list of every other bicycle component. It just helps to focus and to yeah, to really yeah, to get the best uh, out of out of these components. So, but as you can see, if I import a cube. I just hit control one. If I import a cube, it's really tiny, into the scene, then it is snapped to the origin of the scene. But actually this origin is the same origin as I have inside inside SolidWorks. So if well, when I finished off this this uh, this scene and I was happy with the materials, I would make some screenshots or make some test renderings. And a great way to share uh, like assets, key shot assets, finished uh, subcomponents with another partner is to make a key shot package. Uh, key shot packages can be saved from file, save package, uh, continue for now, and then if you give it a name, package for Mike, then if you save this, it will actually include the entire Keyshot scene, as well as all the labels, textures, uh, any lighting environment that you ma that you may might have, it will also include include all the materials that you applied. So it it will be an exact copy of the scene and the assets used in the scene, as as you are working on it. And this is the the process, yeah, that was repeated for all the different parts. So you have this chain ring, which had to be, it was a single, 
a single solid, but it was treated in SOLIDWORKS so that it would have different surfaces for the different finishes. So you have like this is a matte, uh, like steel finish. Then you have a, a sort of glossy, uh, anodized look, and then you have some a, a sort of brushed, uh, sh sh yeah, shivelled uh, finish over here. So yeah, again, this was repeated for. Uh, for many different uh, components. Um, let me see. So, for instance, this was a scene to provide uh, Mike with the the. Again, very tiny components. You may think quite insignificant, but they just help to express the realism. So you have these spoke nipples that hold the spokes into the real rim. And then you have the valve stem as well. So these are material materialized as you see them in the VR. So again, with all the detail, that just helps to sell them if they are in a close-up shop. And the way I went about this is to apply, yeah, I just provided the wheels inside the scene even though they were not needed or were already present in the scene, but I just provided the wheels and the hubs to, yeah, to make sure that once imported in the scene, uh, they were aligned correctly. So Mike would import this uh, this uh, Keyshot file into his main uh, bike working file. I would import them, check alignment, and then yeah. Then I actually applied a clay material to the parts that were yeah non-critical to what I had to supply. Um, so that's actually a good te technique to, to, to use because if you go to the scene material tab and go to clay and select parts with material, then you can actually simply delete these parts and you just, uh, you just have, yeah, what you need to integrate into into your scene. Uh, again, in this scene, if I import a cube, make it a bit a little bit bigger. Um, okay, here's something. Oh yeah, okay, I see what's happening. So again, the origin, if I make sure that everything is centered as I had imported it from, from SOLIDWORKS, then the, yeah, the origin is exactly in the right position relative to all the other components. So after all the hard work and yeah, all the animating, you end up with a finished key shot scene with all the animations uh, attached, uh, applied. Uh, when and then when it's time to create a key shot VR, then. So, when it's time to create the Keyshot VR, then you have the, 
the ability to actually use the all the animations you have here in your timeline uh, as the as the basis for the frames that go into the into the final final VR. So if you look at the render the render dialog, if I click render, then you have a tab for key shot VR. And as you see here and um, I have animation frames enabled for the entire duration of the yeah the animations in the timeline, which in this case are 930 frames. So it's quite a lot. So you can imagine that rendering at uh, HD resolution, it takes quite a while to render. Uh, inside the eShot VR settings, you can make all kinds of yeah settings for like how, yeah, angle control is not relevant here because we're rendering an animation. You can set the, the quality you want, you can set the resolution, as well as rotation damping, which is like, uh, yeah, how smooth your, your, your mouse or finger gestures will be when you're using it on an iPad, or how sensitive the 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 response is of the, the VR when you interact with it. So the dampening is like it's a when you release your mouse button it will keeps on it will it will keep on scrolling a bit which which makes it a bit more smoother to use. You can set all kinds of uh, yeah settings but it's uh, yeah important important to know that Actually, all of these settings you see here, like the dampening, um, you can still change them once the Keyshot VR has has finished. Because what the what the VR uh, creates is a a set of uh, of frames like you would have with an animation, but also a, a HTML file and a JavaScript. So if you open then the HTML file, it will load all the frames through the, yeah, the JavaScript and apply the settings from the HTML to your VR. Now this is a sort of yeah, imposition rough um, VR. You can see the surface quality, uh, the rendering quality is still not uh, not top notch. But this was fine to get uh, an idea uh, of how how the VR would look and just to to pitch this as a uh, to the to specialized as the client and to get their feedback. So actually, as the VR finishes, it also generates a instructions uh, HTML file. And if I scroll down a bit, then it actually contains information about how you can use the uh, the files Keyshot generates to embed it on your own website. So yeah, it it's con it really contains all the information that you really need to yeah to make it work on your website or to include it in any other form of presentation. Another nice feature of uh, of VRs is that they can be well, set up through the settings in the HTML file to be responsive 
with regards to your your browser width. So if I this is the final VR uh, as delivered on the website of Specialized, but as I scale my my browser window, you'll see that the the yeah the size of the VR is scaled as well. So this is really handy if you have like in this case this is uh, an an HD 1920 by 1080 pixels uh, VR. So if you're viewing it on a smaller screen, say, yeah, uh, uh, 2080 by 720, for instance, then it will still display uh, display full size uh, as it will scale to accommodate your your browser window, which is really nice. So as I said before, um, yeah, rendering uh, a VR of this size and this complexity um, it can take quite a while. There are 930 f uh, separate images to be rendered in in high definition, and I think what was really critical to make this happen. Uh, on budget and especially on time was to have the ability to render the VR using a using network rendering. So so yeah network rendering is uh, an add-on an extra uh, yeah an extra service to 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 Keyshot, where you can actually send your your um, your animations or your big render job to a queue, and this allows you to yeah to render uh, to render big jobs on as as, as much as uh, as, yeah, there's re there's really no limit, uh, but you can render a like, like we did render this job on 360 cores or even more. Um, so to give you an idea of how critical the network rendering capability of the capability was, even on 360 cores, it took uh, close to 60 hours to render the entire uh, VR so you can imagine how long it would have taken on a yeah, eight core workstation or yeah or anything anything much lower than 360 cores so for this project the, the network rendering capability was quite essential another thing I would like to highlight uh, as far as the success of this project goes, is the the importance of having a great relationship with your clients. So, what really helped with the with this project was a a uh, a great uh, yeah involvement of specialized and. They had a very clear vision about what they wanted. They wanted a dramatic presentation of their, yeah, what what is essentially their top of the line uh, bike. So they had a clear vision, but still they left us with a lot of freedom in how we executed it, in the kind of mood and lighting we chose for the final VR. So yeah. Basically, we were we were in total control uh, of the lighting we, we used and yeah, just the, the mood setting in general. Another critical yeah importance of having a, a critical aspect of a good relationship with the client is having access to 
to the right data, get data when you need it, and you have to have it on time. And well, well not only get data, but uh, things like labels as well, and good reference images, because even for tiny things as uh, as screws, it helps when you have actual sample images of the things you need to model. Also for the, the finish uh, labels, uh, it helps to have a great set of, uh, of reference images. One of the most critical components in making this, this bike look as real as possible was to have a, a good carbon finish. So we actually had lots of great resource, uh, great uh, reference images from specialized for yeah, just different angles of this this uh, this material. Also in a different setting, like uh, how the material looks like in 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 the sun outdoors. It really helped to yeah to to model the the materials as accurately as possible. Just yeah, full full shots of the complete product, which was very helpful. Uh, even though the product was not really finalized for launch at at that time. But it really helps to have uh, yeah a good feel of how the labels should be placed, and yeah, just like like I said, having access to to great uh, source material is very helpful. So in this case, we actually got a got. The, the the vector format of all the labels and all the finishes and all the colors that, that that go into the decals, the stickers of this bike, and um, yeah, and just to show you how critical the decals were in this project, this is uh, the exact same scene as the final VR, but then only all the, the decals are removed here. So and this is the final one with all the decals. And then you can see that if I make let me make this window a bit smaller. And close this one. So you can see that beside all the details, uh, all the detail that went into into the models and the, the finishes, that it's also a big part uh, the the decals that really sell sell this bike, it really help, help help to sell this this bike. So and this was actually something that specialized themselves were very yeah were very very helpful in in providing the right the right decals. And then a bit to to finalize this uh, my presentation, just to show you the importance of why uh, spending the time to model all the details in is really pays off. Um, it might actually be that, well, you, this is the, the product that was uh, the, the assignment to provide uh, interactive product presentation, but what if your client says, hey, I like your VR so much, uh, can't you, Make some other visualizations for us using, well, using the scenes that you have, 
and if you if your models are intricate enough, then they really can be used for a lot of different purposes. So you could make uh, these are detailed shots that I made of the of the, of this scene. So you could perfectly use uh, this detailed model uh, to make detailed shots that would go in a brochure or on, or on a website. Um, so you could even make quite believable close-up shots of the like the drive the drive assembly. And you have the the texture. The, 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 the detail and texture as well. You see quite well the the actual bumps that were modeled on the tire. So these images and these scenes can be perfectly used to make high quality uh, marketing shots that can go anywhere from yeah YouTube to to brochures, uh, print, uh, whatever. So it really pays off to spend the time modeling in as much detail as, as you can within budget, of course. Uh, here's another quick shot uh, that you can use maybe for creating manuals or, yeah, there's lots of stuff you can do. In this example, I actually applied a tune material to, yeah, to the derailers and then put a chain in them in a metal material, just to have a bit of a contrast. And just to show you what I mean by repurposing, I should be able to find this. No, let me see. If I Google this, specialized bench, YouTube. So yeah, here we see that this bike has gotten a lot of a uh, a lot of exposure in the in the press. Uh, can't seem to find it. Oh yeah, let me see. So. This is a little mini page that uh, TBNO built to really, yeah, as a tribute to the to the team effort, so to speak. And these are videos that were made for Specialized, put on YouTube, uh, on Specialized requests. So these are just small snippets, small segments of the entire animation, but Specialize is now using them to, yeah, for presentations to clients and, and for other purposes. So once you have a, a completely, a completely, yeah, built scene, you can. There's lots of 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 different purposes you you will be able to, to find for it. So yeah, I guess that uh, concludes my presentation for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, learned a few things or two. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm open for questions if there are any. All right, Dries, thank you very much. That was very insightful. Cool to see how much work really went into that final product. Um, we're a little over uh, our time, so in case anybody attending needs to leave, uh, a full recording of this will be available on youtube.com slash keyshot3d. But yeah, let's just um, go over. There are a few outstanding questions. Um, so the first one is you know the like the derailers and the the shifters were those actually provided by SRAM or specialized or 
um, were, were those modeled by you guys? Well, I, I can maybe show the original get data that we got. Um, should be over here. Oh, no, wait. I don't have these. So I believe that SRAM was contacted um, and were asked for the, yeah. the parts, but they, they said they don't actually share that CAD data to external sources, right? Yeah, getting the data from SRAM was was the the, the biggest. Uh, yeah, wouldn't say a problem, but it was the those were the parts that we had to spend the most time on preparing. But we did actually get models from them, but they were very coarse, like single part geometry. Mm -hmm. um, I can actually show the the derailers. Um, And I believe Specialized uses Pro-E, right? Yeah, yeah. So all the data we got from Specialized uh, was exported as step. And that was then brought into SolidWorks. So yeah, this is uh, basically what the, what the rear derailleur geometry looked like when I got it from from uh, SRAM and then import it into SOLIDWORKS. So it's basically a single a single part with actually only two solid bodies and a bunch of uh, yeah of, of, of loose surfaces. So all open geometry, no axis, nothing movable. And then to add to the to the pain, it was actually in the, in the wrong position, mm -hmm. so it wasn't articulated correctly. So to make that work, we, uh, uh, well, I, uh, let me see, yeah, um, have it somewhere over here. To make that work, I had to, yeah, hmm. these are now all um, all put into sub-assemblies and, and made it together, but there was a lot of work to, yeah, to prepare these files. That seems like something like that would be pretty tedious. Yeah, it is, because actually if you... Uh, I can open this uh, this part. So the way I went about it is I just I imported I imported yeah the relevant surfaces into SolidWorks from that single part I just showed. As you can see, it, there's all kinds of holes and non-circular uh, contours. So it's it's really just an open surface. So then you would spend yeah like a, a long time just patching up this thing, uh, making sure you have the whole references, and then just reapply the holes in solid just to end up with an actual solid. Hmm. Wow. So that was a big uh, big job. But then okay. again. Yeah. Go ahead. But if what is it doing? Oh, yeah. But then if you do all that work, you can actually yeah. Nice. You can move it like you like it needs to move. And and this was actually something that needed to happen because we needed to to like move this thing like like five millimeters or the chain wouldn't fit and it wouldn't look very very cool in the in the in the complete assembly. Yeah. So then once you had your files set up in SolidWorks, did you save those out as 
solid parts or solid assemblies, or did you use the Keyshot plugin to push that over into directly into Keyshot? Yeah, actually, because of uh, I would say actually because of a, <laughs> a limitation of the tessellator in inside uh, SolidWorks. I would uh, export it into a well. This is the the way I went about it because of the tight deadline. It might not have been the best approach in general, but I actually exported the the subcomponents or the entire bike as a step file, and then used the step file to import into Keyshot. But I merely did it to get uh, better control over the tessellation because I would set the, the yeah the tessellation quality upon import into into Keyshot. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Um, okay. At the time, at the time, it just seemed like the best approach, but. <laughs> um, okay, and then. Uh, do you mind talking a little bit about the materials? If we go into Keyshot, can you give us some insight on maybe the carbon fiber of the frame? Yeah. So I would like to point out I have now I'm running this scene inside Keyshot uh, six, but this project was was done in Keyshot 5. Um, so, yeah, for instance, yeah. I think probably yeah, the, the, the most important material on this bike is the the one on the on the frame because it's a very specific carbon fiber finish. Uh, it's actually laid up uh, so it's hand laid up. People uh, or work uh, specialized employees would actually cut pieces of carbon in specific patterns, lay them up, and then yeah, build from there. So this material, because it has like a, a satin finish, we chose to go with a metallic paint. With a yeah, uh, for anyone familiar with the met metallic paint, you can set your metallic your metal coverage and now it's at 0 0.05 so if you set it at a subtle value it adds some some yeah some satin finish to your material um, and then f as far as textures yeah again um, if this seems a bit odd to you this is uh, yeah the textures, the texture tab has been having an, an overhaul for Keyshot 6, so this might look different. It actually does look different from Keyshot 5. Um, so as for the base color, um, it's best seen in these um, yeah, patches. These are not artifacts in the material, but this is actually how the material looks like in real life. So it kind of gives a good idea about yeah, just how the, the the underlying carbon is cut into pieces and then laid up uh, yeah by hand. So this texture is a spots procedural textures inside Keyshot. So it's over here under 3D textures, uh, spots, and then yeah, it's it's a bit tweaked to not look like spots. So they yeah. Hmm, cool. So yeah. Um. Now I've, I'm curious. Can you open the material graph? Yeah. So this um, is. Yeah. Go ahead. This is a Keyshot Six Pro. Fit. Yeah. This is. Yeah. This is actually actually a, a, an outstanding bug. 
inside the material graph uh, because you get all this spaghetti. Um, so if you select the spots node, yeah, and press C to preview the color, now can yeah. we see in the yeah. real-time view exactly yeah. what that procedural is doing? Yeah, exactly. So it, yeah, it's maybe not, not very clear because it's there is a very small difference between both use of the spot, but yeah, hmm, this, is, cool. this is this is the yeah how the material was defined. Okay, great. Well, that was awesome. Um, I'd say it was a success. So thank you very much for taking your time to present this to us today, Dries, and. Uh, Again, a recording of this will be available on uh, Keyshot.com and uh, YouTube.com slash Keyshot3D. And we hope to see all of you guys again next month for the next webinar. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye.